Welcome back into the Denver Sports Betting Show here on Mile High Sports 98.1. Shamlock's here with you. I got Betts and Dylan with me, or Betts and Denver with me, excuse me. But also with us is one of my favorite guests. We love having him on, not just to see his beautiful face, but it also means it is football time. <laughs> He's looking around. Get that. <laughs> We're three weeks, three weeks away, three weeks away. College football is almost finally back, so we bring in the guy that knows the buffs better than anybody. It's CU Insider. It's our guy, Big Dog Chico. Chico, buddy, it's been a while, but it's great to have you back on the show. Yes, indeed. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. How you doing, Dylan? Betts and Denver. I'm doing good. I'm yes. doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Ready to go. Three weeks away, ready to rock and roll. Three weeks away. It's all the, I mean, you do, you do all the work in the off season too, just like these guys knowing the ins and outs of, of camp and, and who they brought in. So I want to get your take, you know, last year is it, you know, we knew all the hype year one started off three and O top 20 beating TCU. And then they kind of got in the conference play and we saw what happened there where we just couldn't quite get over the hump. But for year one, you never want to say, you know, four and eight isn't the goal, I know, but from where they were the year prior, making some strides. But in year two, um, what's the expectations here for the Buffs? Again, it's so different than in years past, you know, with, with the portal and the way they utilize the portal, because you really got a brand new team again, new coaching staff and a new conference. So what's the 2024, 25 Buffs expectations in your eyes? Well, it depends who you're asking, but if you're talking <laughs> just about in my eyes, then the expectations are, are are sky high right now. We brought in the talented pieces that we wanted to add um, based off of the, the hardships from last year. So we retooled that offensive and defensive line, added some more linebackers and tight ends and different pieces across the board. So I think we improved at every position. So uh, don't look for this team to be a mirror of last year. And it's going to be, I think, surprising uh, a lot of people out there. But it's going to have to be like an upset type season this year to be successful because a lot of people are going to have us uh, finishing probably in the bottom half of the league. But I think uh, Colorado has enough talent. If they can bring it together and jail together, we can surprise some people this year. I agree with you. I think they definitely improved um, all the positions across the across the board, really, for the, for the starters. Um, you know, obviously, we know how good Shadur is. Um, they bring back a healthy Travis Hunter, and then who they who they added. Uh, as, I mean, the receivers are as good as anybody. Um, you know, bringing Horn back, they bring in um, Western and Shepard, who are very very talented. Um, so again, across the board, I think it's good. They improved the O line, but I'm still. You know, we saw Shadur last year. He can't throw if he's on his back and all those sacks right. last year. So I know you've been, um, you know, they brought in some transfers. They bring in um, Jordan Seaton, you know, five-star guy. But he is still as talented, but he is still a freshman. He is starting left tackle against some of these Big 12 teams. How big a concern? Yeah. We know the upside, but how, how you know, as you've been following him, is he going to be ready for the, for the challenge right out the gate? Yeah, I think Jordan Seaton is a different breed of young guys coming out. Five-star offensive lineman, has the size and the skills, but he's been on campus since early in, uh, I think, uh, January. So he's been really working with the team. He's not like a normal freshman that hasn't been there. Kind of like look at Dylan Edwards, how he was there early last year and the impact he made early on this team. I think a guy like Jordan Seaton can be that type of freshman to get out there and start day one. And then you look at the other guys that they brought along on that offensive line. Um, and it as a whole, they brought in guys who have played before, has that experience, former starters, has high PFF grades. These guys are projected to go to the league. You got a uh, guy like Preston Hodge, um, high grade, played on an undefeated team last year. You bring in a lot of young talent, but with potential in Peyton Kirkland and uh, big Zach Owens. But then guys who started last year, like Yakiri Walker, uh, you get Wyatt Hummel, you get Justin Mayers, uh, Khalil Benson. All of these guys are, are have experience, but a guy like Benson can play multiple positions. So he'll help a guy like Jordan Seaton develop. But then you have Bill Lodehope, former NFL veteran for years, who played the left tackle position. So Jordan Seaton would be getting mentored by a guy who actually played the same position that he's playing um, in the league for years. So I think he's in the right place to develop along with the other guys they brought along. So we're going to, I think, 
the overall goal for sure is to keep Shador Sanders upright and give him a chance to pick apart the defense like we've seen him do. We've seen him do that under distress. So uh, I, hopefully, uh, uh, hopefully he can do it while being clean back there in the pocket. And yeah, and uh, I think what you said, like uh, the offensive line, it's going to have to mesh because, I mean, it's going to take a minute to build that chemistry. But I think if they can mesh quickly, then you'll see a lot of improvements. My main concern is just the schedule. The last eight weeks of the season, they play UCF, Kansas State, Arizona, Cincinnati, Texas Tech, Utah, Kansas, and Oklahoma State. That's yeah. a hard, that's, that, that they have a hard schedule. And I mean, it's, I feel like, a lot of people haven't finished in bottom of the half because man, I, there's a lot of games you see in there. A lot of like favorites to win the big 12 with Utah and Kansas state. And then you have UCF also who's a sleeper to win the big 12 as well. And then yeah. other teams like Oklahoma state, Kansas also really good. And um, uh, yeah, it's just gonna be a, a hard. And I think like which goal probably six and six this year. Uh, but I say, if you, you can get their exact wins at five for plus 450, and I kind of like that, or ex at six for plus uh, 440. So I kind of like you did those as well. Yeah, but you hit it right on the head. Tough schedule for Colorado. No no, no layups as Coach Prime said, yeah. even with the first game <laughs> yeah. in North Dakota State. So they're going to have to be on point. But I think those first four games are going to be uh, very important for them to yeah. get in a, in a space to where they can at least be bowl eligible uh, going into that tough uh, stretch of conference games with all of those teams projected to be very good, just like you said. So it's going to be upset season going throughout this year unless they build up some type of momentum and people jump on the bandwagon. But <laughs> you got to get those first four games um, and they'll probably have themselves in position to uh, make a run later on. Yeah, those you hit it right on the head. Those first four games, I think, are the key because after that, you know, as you and Dylan mentioned, the schedule, they didn't get any of the bottom feeders. You know, they only have Houston, BYU, um, you know, some of those the the teams. Those Cincinnati's really the only down team that they really get on the schedule in conference. And yeah, you know, you know Coach Prime, we didn't get any layups. Um, I think they're going to be just fine against North Dakota State. Week one, I think they're kind of. I think North Dakota State, North Dakota State, will be very trendy. They're not as good as they have in in years past, and they'll be ready. But that that Nebraska game week two is going to be a war going to Lincoln. We know how rowdy yeah. that's going to be. Um, I think the, personally, I think they've got Nebraska as a six and a half point favorite. I think that's too many. I think it's going to be a really really close game. Um, and then they got to go right after an emotional game just like they did last year when they beat Nebraska. And then they got to go to, to Colorado state for, for another revenge spot. Um, yeah. It's tough. I think that they got to come out of those games um, at three and one to kind of set themselves up for, again, to get to that magic six and get them to a bowl game. I think that's really um, whether or not admitting it. Um, I think that yeah. is, that's the goal. If they can, if they can get over the hump and get to the bowl, uh, get to a bowl game. But yeah, I think the ceiling and you know is very high for this team because yeah, of the I talent think. around. But um, you know, if they can just, you know, play the best that they can play as far as, you know, based off of last year, put it like that. Based off of last year, you have that experience as much as the coaching staff, the guys you brought back, you have the experience to see how that season went, the emotional games. So you're kind of expecting that this year with more experienced players. So you know, if people are projecting them to be in the bottom half, that's fine because then you can kind of sneak up on teams, although it won't be really sneaking up because everybody's going to be ready Everybody's got them circled, yeah. But <laughs> maybe, maybe they're looking over them, so to speak, and saying yeah. that this is the same 4-8 and eight team and they're going to come in with a lot of hype, but they're not going to win. And yeah. maybe they'll look over them a little bit and get smacked in the mouth and then be looking around like what's going on. But a team like this and the staff like Coach Prime has, who had, you know, 20 plus point lead at half uh, versus Stanford, but then lost that game. They're going to have that in the back of their mind. So if you ever get up again, 21, nothing or 20, whatever, nothing versus a team this year, they're going to keep their foot on the gas based off of the experience last year. So I think some of those games that, that you're in position to win last year, but you end up losing, that won't be the case this year. Yeah, a, a very high variance team. And if it all clicks and it goes right in some of these one possession games, the ceiling is a nine, uh, probably nine to even 10 wins if everything goes goes right. Um, 
I took a little bit of, of our boy, Travis Hunter to win the Heisman for that reason. It's 60 to one, just because mm. when you look at all, you know, we know the quarterbacks just dominate the Heisman, um, which is, you know, why I think it's going to be tough for Shadur to win because if they go, you know, seven and five, six and six, he might be great, put up some of the best numbers, but you got to have the record there behind it. But Travis yeah. Hunter can be, I think, a difference maker playing both sides of the ball um, and giving them, you know, something that these, all these, cause all these other quarterbacks all kind of just blend together and, and they're the right. same to me. So that's why I took a shot a little outside the box with, with Travis Hunter. Uh, cause we know how talented he is. He's going to go top 10 in the draft. He's a mm-hmm. special kid. If he can just stay healthy. Yeah. Cause the stuff he's doing special on both sides of the ball in this type of, in this level of college football, and he's continuing to do it. Um, I think he'll be a shoe in with the wins to match. You know, I think he'll still be a shoe. I, I don't think they can go four and eight and he can do what he did or even better. And he he still have a chance at the Heisman. I think, like you said, you have to win. And uh, and if you do get those eight plus wins, now you might see a situation where Shadur and Travis is there at the podium. But you have to get those wins for both of them to be there. But like you said, if Travis puts up those numbers and they just get that bowl, then we'll see him there uh, in New York or wherever they have him in that, right? <laughs> we know. Well, we know. We know the spotlight is going to be on them. They're going to get pl- uh, plenty of press, and they're going to be putting up the numbers um, every, each and every week. So we are yeah. up against it for the clock. We do have to take a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to get all of our season predictions. Going to put you on the spot. Going to make you give us give us the number. We're going to be right back. Uh, here on the Denver Sports Betting Show, we're with Big Dog Chico, Bets in Denver, Mile High Sports 98.1.